We were introduced to Varix the Loyal back in the House of Wolves. As we ventured to the Reef to help the Queen and the Awoken from the proclaimed Kel of Kells, we soon learned of a friendly fallen from the House of Judgment who would aid us in our journey. At the time, Varric seemed like his intentions were just and that he truly was on our side. But as the universe began to unfold, things felt kinda sketchy and various characters could sense a weird feeling coming from the friendly fallen. Today we will discuss Varric's possible role in Forsaken, how his connection to the fallen still exists, and if he's truly guiding Aldrin through all this madness. They say fallen are evil. Fallen are lost. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Hope you are well and everything is going alright, and I'm excited to bring you today's video. So this has been a question on my mind for a long time. Was Varix really this friendly fallen character they portrayed him to be, or was this all some type of cover up to protect his race from extinction? So let's discuss how Varix came to be in this position at the Reef, and then we'll talk about how the events in Forsaken may play out and throw some other theories out there as well. Long ago, Varix was a scribe for the House of Wolves and witnessed many fallen actions, including the uprising of Skolas and his forces. As innocent civilians were getting slayed by Skolas and so on, Varix just couldn't take it anymore. This was the moment when he contacted the Crows, which are Aldrin's spy devices, which helped him put an end to this uprising on Sybil. So Varix hated Skolas, not just because of his actions out there on the battlefield, but he was also the one who docked his arms. Skolas once told me to stand still like you. Then he cut off my arms. After Skolas' capture, Varix joined forces with the Queen of the Reef, trying to keep the traditions of the House of Judgment alive. Varix's ultimate goal is to see the Fallen restored to lawful, peaceful rule. It's all he wants. He wants his race to be at peace again, have a home, you know, a safe place to live, things like that. But the Friendly Fallen also has some lingering jealousy for other races, especially humanity, as the Traveler had chosen us and had left his race, the Fallen, or better known as the Elixni, with nothing. Other characters that are also close to him at the Reef suspect he has ulterior motives like he's trying to become the Kel of Kells and saying things like he holds too many alliances. During the Taken King, we know that the Awoken took on Oryx around Saturn, but Petra and Varix were back at the Reef, keeping things in order. So take a listen to this card which explains the Taken King situation and how things went down afterward. Another Prime destroyed. One sources of life, light, hope. Now a sign of decay, machines as gods. Conspire with Kells, conspire to kill, to conquer, to control. This will not end. There will always be a new Kel. There will always be a new Prime, yes? Skolas was savage. Skolas was cruel. Skolas was... right. Only Kells of Kells can end the slaughter. Only Kells of Kells can unite the houses. Petra has given House of Judgment a great gift. Varix now speaks for the crows. Crows fly on black wings, find what House Judgment needs found. House Judgment and Reef are allies. Petra is a friend. The crows will do as Petra needs, but will also search for Varix. Yes, they will find that which is lost. The crows will find the Kel of Kells. Then banners will rise as one, and Elixni will stand together forever. So here we learn that in the Taken King, Petra gives control of the crows to Varix. He's like, yeah, you know, Petra's gonna use them to help us out a bit, but I'm also gonna use them to try and find the new Kel of Kells and unite the Fallen. So now that we know that information from the first game, let's discuss what Bungie said when asked this. Should we expect to see Petra, Varix, and Mara Sov return? And here they're obviously talking about in Forsaken. Here's what Scott Taylor had to say. Well, I'll tell you a couple of things. As you can see with the setting of the Reef and Prince Aldrin, we do not want to revisit this world we've established before. Petra is absolutely a part of the action. She's actually a pretty integral part of the story. You're going to learn what Varix is up to, but that's going to come in a form you might not expect. So there we learn we're going to figure out what Varix is up to, but how is that going to happen? 
Is it something as extreme as he's turning against us, or has he transformed somehow? Maybe, you know, look totally different. Now, there are many theories out there suggesting that the new character, the spider, is Varix, and while you can sort of make some connections, I'm not sure I believe that at all yet. So Varix has control of the crows, gets secrets, and is talking to someone through them, but let's take a look at some more quotes hinting towards his possible intentions. Send me your ship. I need the parts. Are you going to your ship now? Where did you leave it? Is it in good condition? My service to the queen is complicated, Guardian. We are friends, yes, Guardian. Give me your ghost. You and I, friends, yes? I admire your ship. Someone is looking for Varix. Someone has questions. The great machine resides with your house. You think it will stay? Little ghost. Come out, come out. All these guardians here. Maybe I'll catch a ghost. Take it apart. Varix, in the end you choose the wrong side. Maybe today. So those are definitely some interesting quotes. I like that last one because it says someone is looking for Varix, someone has connections, and in my opinion, that's probably Aldrin. But from the other ones, you learn Varix wants a ghost, he asks you about your ship a lot, and so on. Now something that's pretty cool is that in the last couple of days with the API update to Destiny 2, Bungie added more of Cade's journal fragments. So they're updated a bit, there's some new ones I believe, and now let's take a look at this one right here. Cade says, I've tried everything Ace. Tried re-rigging my ghost's shell every which way, making a deal with Varix for one of his captured ghosts, even thought about following Ikora to Io. Then it hit me. I can end this real quick by hopping right on Gary's ship via some Vex trickery. So here I am, Nessus, my own little Vex playground. Here goes nothing. So from that journal we learn Varix has acquired ghosts and has been using them to his advantage or experimenting on them. Now everything I just read there comes from when the Red Legion attacked and the light was kind of drained and so on. Cade was trying to figure out a way how to end Gary or, you know, Gaul, and he tried everything to fix his ghost, re-rigging it, meeting with Varix to get a new one, and following Ikora to Io. This could be nothing, but why would Varix want all this technology from the Traveler? And also, how is he going to use it to his advantage? So this is where we begin to theorize a bit. I was discussing with Dante from Destiny PD on uh, Discord over here, and he said something which I really enjoyed, a pretty nice theory. He said Varix could be one of the masterminds behind this whole Forsaken army alongside Aldrin himself. We do see the two communicating in secret through the crows, and those are the secrets that he wouldn't tell Petra and they could be pretty important. That comes from this quote right here. It says, you've seen the same reports I have and more, Petra said. I'm not stupid. I know the crows whisper secrets to you and you don't pass them along to the rest of us. The next bit of evidence when you take a look at Forsaken, you have Aldrin's army of scorned forces and barons, right? We know these are undead fallen warriors who were revived somehow, but that has been unclear to this point. I've seen people proposing that Nacris is still alive and he's reviving them because he's a necromancer, but that's a little bit crazy in my mind considering he's a hive god. But knowing that Varix has ghosts in his control is interesting. We know that ghosts also have the capability to revive dead entities. Now you may ask, well, ghosts can revive guardians though, they can't just revive anything. Well, this doesn't seem to be the case given various examples in the Destiny universe. So what if Varix somehow used these ghosts to revive these fallen and create the scorn? Obviously a pretty big theory that's kind of far out there, but why else would he want this tech? Is it just to make sure the Fallen can survive? Is it something as crazy as creating a Scorn army? Another big piece of information comes from the first game where we help Varix build these Elder Ciphers by participating in the prison. Some people were actually oblivious to what these were, and it's pretty crazy when you figure it out. A quote says, Varix will summon you once the Elder Cipher is ready. Kel uses ciphers to control the ether flow. Archons and barons take deep drafts, grow tall. Dregs with tiny sips stay small. So Varix now not only has this ghost tech or whatever, but he also has the Elder Cipher, which will allow him to find a new Kel and control the ether flow. 
Now before we wrap up this video, let's go back to the spider thing. Again, not 100% sure how this could work, I'm just randomly making connections, but the spider says this on one of the new weapons. Control the supply. The spider. Now here he's obviously talking about the ether supply given the name of this weapon. So it seems the spider wants to control the supply of ether, and the other cipher says the Kells use ciphers to control the ether flow. Pretty interesting. Arrogant crow dies in little ship. What do I care? Anyway, Guardians, that's all I got for today's video. How do you think this story is going to play out in Forsaken? Is Varric still on our side, we're just going to, you know, encounter him in a weird way? Or is he turning against us, trying to keep the Fallen alive? I like making these sorts of videos, you know, telling you about the character, giving their actual lore, and then branching off with sorts of theories, trying to piece the story together and figuring out the expansion together. So if you enjoyed these types of videos, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and tell me what else you'd like to see down below. Anyway, my name's Evade, and I'll catch you Guardians in the next one.